Welcome out to It's All Been Turk For This Time, Emergence. Yes, it's another single word TNG episode, Emergence, which tells you nothing about the episode. Emergence. Hey, we're emerging on Facebook. It's All Been Turk Before. Uh, a lot of people following us there, hanging out with us there. Uh, it's a good time. It's one of the, one, uh, uh, yeah, whatever, however you feel about Facebook, where it's one of the good times that is still on Facebook. Uh, keep up with what we've got going on here and uh, have fun. Engage with us. Let us know how we're doing. Uh, just talk to us about the shows. That's what we want. Uh, don't go to Reddit. I mean, you know what? Go ahead. Go to Reddit, too. But you can follow us on Facebook. It's all been tracked before. And speaking of it's all been tracked before, this is it's all been tracked before. Emergence. TNG. It's all been tracked before. Now to another episode of It's All Been Trekked Before. Your regular hosts are here. This is Steven. And the held over Keith. <laughs> and Jimmy Jerome. <laughs> oh my God, Keith. Just we we're talking about the holdovers before we started. Uh, sort on of. camera. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I'll put that on Patreon, our Oscar nomination talk. Although by that now the uh, Oscars are way over, so I probably yeah. won't. But we're talking about the holdovers. We're here, though, not to talk about the holdovers. We're here to talk about the Star Trek The Next Generation anti-penultimate episode, which is a word. It means third from last. <laughs> Emergence, because we only have two episodes left after this. First impressions of the anti-penultimate, I love that word, episode. Would you? <laughs> no, I'm tempted to do one of the, what is it, like Gene Shallot or something, like an anticlimactic <laughs> yeah, well, with an okay. E. But uh, <laughs> no, I'm, uh, still, I'm still in my mode to defend the holdovers. So you're throwing me if I have yeah. to. I, I'm not going to defend this episode. <laughs> yeah. A- Anti pin climactic. It, it just no, no. It, I think I was a little too distracted. I'm, I'm, I'm during parts of it to get some of the to get some of the, the setup and the science behind what, what the ship was trying to do exactly. I mean, I, I, I got it by the end. Uh, it's it you know, just like probably between one of those commercial breaks. Like, I came back I was like, oh, wait a minute. That thing. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm skipping too far ahead, I think. But there were some. All right, I, I will say that overall, I think I I, I liked it as a, as one uh, like the scientific investigation episode, one of those kinds of things. It feels like the the resolution to it, or, or rather the 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 you know the toy surprise to all of it, just that you know has has been done a few times, obviously. But you know, there I I, I guess I liked the presentation of some of the things. And I think that was really the point of what they were trying, what they wanted. It's like let's. We need it. We need a vehicle to do this with holodeck characters and have some fun and that kind of thing. So, yeah. this will not surprise you guys or any of our listeners. I was not <laughs> thrilled with this episode. <laughs> the second I saw holodeck, I'm like, oh boy. But then I will say, you know, as with a couple of the other holodeck episodes, that it did bring me. These are ones that brought me around. The the data Sherlock Holmes and. Uh, Picard as the uh, who's the detective he plays? Uh, Dixon Hill. That's yeah. I you know those kind of brought me around, and I thought they wrapped up great, especially the Dixon Hill one. Or the Dixon Hill, I, I, the data one was more complete to me, and obviously we had Moriarty going forward. But and then the Dixon Hill, I thought they they nailed this thing at the very end. And this one, I felt the same way when they have the conversation at the very end when when data asks. Data asked Picard about, hey, why, why, how did you know? And he goes through like, well, I understood, you know, how this would work. Yeah, I, I know us and, you know, if they've got stuff for, if it's based yeah. on us, blah, 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 blah. I thought that was a great wrap up. But everything mm-hmm. before then, I, it, I, it, it was not uninteresting, <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't, I wasn't super excited or whatever about it. So, it, yeah, 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 not surprisingly. This to me felt like a mix of an early season, a mid early series, mid series and late series episode. (laughs) So it had the. The feel of like, let's do something weird, like a new life form thing that the early seasons kind of did, like big Mm -hmm. swings that didn't quite land. It had that middle thing of let's have the holodeck mess up and whatever. And then it had the late season aspect of, I would say, like a Times Arrow of the whole crew is going to get together to solve the mystery. The whole lead cast is going to get together to solve the mystery. Other than Crusher, of course, because, you know, poor Crusher. Overall, less than the sum of its parts. I I kind of appreciate, like I I mentioned, I'm going to use the word again. It's the anti-penultimate episode. So you have (laughs) to start to wrap things up. And I appreciate that they revisited holodeck malfunctions and new life forms in the anti-penultimate because i feel like those are two main themes of the series as a whole yeah and the fact that it didn't quite land 
the series as a whole of many times doing fight land. So I kind of feel like it's, if you're going to take an episode of the next generation that kind of sums up the next generation in one episode of combining some of its most notable elements, I wouldn't say best elements, but most notable elements. I feel like this is that. And so there's a way I appreciate it, especially with it being close to the end and the way it unfolded, even though I don't love it. That's, that's a pretty good assessment. Yep. Yeah. yeah. We'll see as we get into it. <laughs> we start with a Shakespeare holodeck scene data there. <laughs> There's so much reference to this being the end of Shakespeare's career, the Tempest being the end, the end mm, is near. Uh, yeah. Like they're really hitting you over the head yep. about, about what it is. Although I am totally in agreement with Picard of I can barely see this scene, so I'm kind of checked out. And so when they turn up the lights, it made a good difference. Even though it made everything look cheesier, I liked it. I'm usually okay with in stage shows. I don't feel like everyone has to be lit up like a Christmas tree, but I also agree with the card here. Yeah. And it was like the show itself of hopeful about the future, because at this point, they're already writing the movie. They're already getting ready to make the movie like uh -huh. we've mentioned in the past the cast had no time off they went straight basically what they did is they sent the crew in to beef up the sets a bit so the engineering and the bridge can look more impressive and that's about all they did in between and then immediately started filming the film the movie wow. and that to me is i mean this episode has a story by Brown and Braga, who is one of the two writers of the first mm -hmm. film, the first two films, actually. Yeah. And then Teleplay by Joel Minoski is one of the regular writers that we've talked about for years, directed by Cliff Bowl, like the most frequent next-gen director. So to me, all that made total sense of, let's just do this. The From what I've heard, like I said, I've read the novelization of the finale a bunch of times, even though I've never uh -huh. seen it, and it's amazing. And what I've heard is the penultimate episode is also amazing. So I th think this is the last of the lackluster episodes before we go rocketing <laughs> off into the the finale. And I know the first movie gets mixed reviews. I like it, but it gets mixed reviews, and it's not undeservedly so. Is the first but... one Nemesis or? No, yeah. uh, Generations. Generations. With Kirk, the Shatner next-gen film. Which I hope you already knew, but no. He he knew. <laughs> I feel pretty confident in saying he knew. Yeah. <laughs> Effects when the train goes by, Picard and Data were rather good. Not necessarily when we saw the train, but mm -hmm. if you were watching them laying on the ground, the light and smoke shining on them, I thought was really well done. I was disappointed Picard didn't say there are three lights. <laughs> four. There are four <laughs> lights. Nope. Agree to disagree. <laughs> no no it was five i, I think know, there right. were four and they were trying to get him to say there were five but right. <laughs> maybe i'm jumping ahead too far but he he goes and talks to crusher about this and i don't know if you guys got the same impression but picard is talking about the train and all this stuff and crusher is essentially talking about the train but she's not talking about the train because she's like i wrote she likes to choo choose the line from risky business but she's like why don't you take the trip and find out? And then, uh, why don't you take a trip, a trip? Why don't you take a trip yourself and find out? And Picard's like, very good. I'm all right. Thank you. Don't forget the trip, John Luke. Think about it. You never know who you meet on the Orient Express. And mm. uh, so I, I just thought it was great in between the lines kind of stuff she was doing there. I, I loved that discussion. And I do think, like I said, it's going to take a long time for that stuff to pay off. They're not really yeah. going to deal with that in the films. Wait for Star Trek Picard to get any yeah. more information on the Picard Crusher yeah. relationship. But it, it will be. I mean, it was way overdue to be revisited, but it got revisited. But what stood out to me in that lot and that conversation was the line, you'll never know who you'll meet, which at that point, I'm like, OK, they're obviously going back on the train. Mm -hmm. I was actually disappointed while some of the actors on the train were familiar that they never had somebody shocking that they met like mm -hmm. either bring back an yeah. old holodeck character right. like moriarty which was my alternate episode is this is a moriarty moriarty plot but he was gone been, right i kept i kept expecting it but he's is he like right. well they put him in the cube mm -hmm. but that okay. was one version of him who's yeah. to say there's not another oh, version? right right or, right or bring back another holodeck character from a previous episode i just i wanted that or, or if you're mm -hmm. going to bring in a new character, somebody totally famous that would floor you, just the, you'll never know who you meet. And then these were all the people we met was a little bit lackluster. Yeah. I Well, 
and I was uh, the fashion is so folks were essentially talking about how each of those people were a metaphor for different parts of the ship or whatever. Yeah. Like, not not even like a subtle metaphor, like obvious right, no. metaphors. Like, way over hit you over the head. Yeah. I did think that, Steven would have checked out by now with the holodeck malfunction though. I, I was like, pretty much. <laughs> done. You're done. I have, as soon as the holodeck notes, malfunction, but, you were yeah. done. Yeah. So we the ship went to warp against their will, and that actually saved their lives. That was right. Mildly interesting. Again, not paid <laughs> off, but mildly interesting. Well, they talk about going through a weathering an unexpected magnoscopic storm in the McCordis sector. And I thought, oh, that must be what messed with the ship. Turns out had nothing to do with it other than <laughs> the ship saved them. So I, mean, it, it doesn't have to. I guess not everything has to tie in, actually. But what confused me about that though is they're like, hey, we were in the middle of this thing that was building up and it could explode our warp engine. <laughs> Well, why don't we know that? Well, we don't scan for that. You're not scanning for that. <laughs> your mention. Yeah. And well, and then somebody says there was a data flux distortion. I'm like, what is it? You're just saying words now. Yeah. There were lots of connected, protected nodes multiply, multiplying with Holodeck yeah. 3 as their focal point. Lots of programs running and interconnected. It's too early to talk about my problems with the overall arc of everything, but it to me that did not entice me it did not excite me i was like okay your systems are connecting okay should they already be connected or right. i don't know it's learning yeah i was surprised when they said the holodeck safeties were disengaged why yeah they're always no, disengaged I was, when no, it functions i was okay. not surprised at all. Okay. i was like oh wow who, who could have seen that coming must Everyone. be tuesday <laughs> must be tuesday I will say my my I use this as a common phrase in real life and in radio hour must be Tuesday. That is a a quote I steal from Star Trek Generations. Oh, wow. but so that movie has something we're going to talk about. But must be Tuesday definitely for the, applies to this situation, even though we <laughs> haven't got there yet in Star Trek. Well, on the train, the node puzzle that those two characters were doing. Yeah, could you be any more? hit you over the head blatant dumb mm -hmm. so dumb it could have been any wouldn't it have been cool if it was an, a puzzle that you couldn't tell what it was and then when it mat what it was actually unlocked something it mattered instead of just it's the same things we just saw in the jeffries tubes yeah it it was <laughs> it was uh, yeah i like i i feel like all those characters and actually i do have the, they did make me laugh a couple times but well one of them did but yeah, they they just seemed so generic. I know they were to meet the. They were better. I, they're more interesting in metaphors, I think, or whatever to to get to the parts of the ship or whatever. It's like, oh, turns out the computer is really boring. It has a really terrible sense of panache. No sense of the, panache. The one character that really worked for me, the conductor, <laughs> David Huddleston. Uh -huh. Best known for playing the Big Lebowski in the Big Lebowski. Yeah. Blazing Saddles, the 2005 movie, The Producers, really? I know he was in that, but really? Frantic, but very recognizable. He was the mayor mm -hmm. in the first season of Gilmore Girls. He was in a couple episodes of The West Wing oh, as yeah. a senator. I mean, I love that actor. I was looking to see if he has any other Star Trek credits. But yeah. No, he he, he was Frank's anymore. former business partner, partner, and it's always sunny in one huh. episode. So wonderful three episodes of the Wonder Years. She, yeah. He did a murder she wrote, like so many. He's a great character actor, yeah. So great. I mean, he has 149 IMDb yeah. credits. Yeah. Only 149 yes. IMDb credits. <laughs> <laughs> that was for you, Keith. Thank you. No, I loved him a lot. I love that actor, love the part. Mm -hmm. I think despite how bad it was, he was selling it so hard that it worked. If the other actors had been at his level, it may have made the episode actually work. Mm -hmm. He he does not ask them for the tickets the first time he comes in. He passes them and ignores them while he's asking everybody else until mm -hmm. they start to interfere. Yes. Which I was like, that was an interesting choice. I think from out at some point, someone on the outside is like, well, this means this. You know, mm -hmm. if you give them, you have to be part of the solution. And then you got to work with them, not against them, blah, blah, blah. It's like, oh, okay. Good thing you figured out all the rules. <laughs> I mean, quite honestly, the, 
the second time they went back in the hall deck, I expected them to have tickets. The, it mm-hmm. was crazy that it took them to like the fourth time yeah. to actually <laughs> produce tickets. That brings up to the part where the engineer comes in, played by the great Thomas Capacci. Another great performance, but it, this one was so brief. Best known for Catch Me If You Can, Leaving Las Vegas, No Country for Old Men, and Star Trek Generations. He plays the comm officer. Uh, uh, comm officer. Uh, I th- I don't remember him from the movie. It, it had to be very quick. <laughs> I do remember him from the West Wing TV special he did in 2020 yes. during the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Also remember him from House of Cards last week. He did five episodes of Last Week Tonight with John Oliver. He has actually played seven characters on Star Trek, it says. Yeah. Uh, uh, DS9 and Voyager, he will play, and Enterprise. They'll use him a bunch after this. This was just a very not great perform, or not great part for him because it was interesting. He just did so briefly. This was actually his second appearance on Next Gen. He was an episode of, at the end of season five. Yeah, he only has 137. Uh, only, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I would say he's almost as recognizable a character actor as, as D- David Huddleston, but maybe yeah. not yet when this yeah. episode aired. I think now, now I would say he's as recognizable. Mm-hmm. But yeah, he gets killed so quick. That's so disappointing mm-hmm. to me. Yeah. Because at first I was like, does the computer want help or not? Okay, I guess not. But why even have the thing asking for help if you immediately take it off the board and then say you don't want help? <laughs> the pulling the cord which is supposed to break the train actually makes it go on the right track that's what the in- the conductor said that something fell apart there in the metaphor it breaks we get to a very strange part where they're mapping all the nodes that are appearing through the enterprise and they and i get it's they're using transporters and replicators to do it mm-hmm. so i'm not questioning the nodes appearing where they appear i get that but they talk about it matching Data's pod- positronic brain mm-hmm. is how they figure out it's forming an intelligence and evolving. And Data's positronic brain mirrors the human brain. So is there only one structure of brain that works? In infinite diversity and infinite combination Star Trek are yeah. all intelligent life using the same structure of brain. Yeah, it's just like gender is binary. It's uh, universal. Okay, It's yeah. a notion that didn't age well. No, yeah, 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 it did not age well. They go back into the holodeck. I did appreciate the scene of Data stopping the taxi with his hand, except I wanted to see it like running at him and then cut mm-hmm. away and then coming back to him holding it instead of just <laughs> it misses him. He hears it again. Nothing's happening. And then we cut back and he's holding it. Would it have been better if we had some drama in that? You know, that whole scene, you were talking about how parts of this episode reflect different parts of TNG through the years. That whole backlot thing was like, oh, this is TOS. This is so TOS. I mean, yes. uh, even the train to an extent was. But then when you when, once you're on that backlot, I'm like, TOS may have used that backlot. You know, may have been dressed up a little bit more. Our friends at Fashion and So said it looked like they're like, oh, this, this isn't a yeah. It's obviously a backlot. Oh, yeah. it's the, the part in New York where Rory goes to stalk Jess in season three of Gilmore Girls, and I agree. I think it does look like that. So. I think it does. To me, it, it to me, I was like, where is the clothesline? Where's Edith Keeler? This looks like the city on the <laughs> yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. That also reminds me that when I real when I learned that Gilmore Girls was all pretty much on a back lot. Mm. Yeah. Wasn't anywhere near New England. It, I was disappointed, but also super impressed at the same time. It made me <laughs> appreciate those actors even more every time there was a snow episode, like, oh man, they're in LA pretending like it's it's soap flakes. It's soap flakes. It's like, yeah, I was like, that's that's good. I if Wait, Stars did, Hollow did was a say, real did place, did they say burr a lot? <laughs> <laughs> no, they just shivered and had blue lipstick on. Yeah. <laughs> if Stars Hollow was a real place, I may have already moved there. I'm not yeah, joking. Yeah. I not guess. Joking. I guess B99 did a lot. Did most of theirs out there too? And there's an episode where they they're they're going to the either Long Island or the Jersey Shore, and they're pretending like it's February. So nice. and I think either Melissa Fumero or one of them was like, yeah, it was 90 degrees when we were filming that and pretending like oh, it was wow. And I was like, that's also speaking. Impressive. They mentioned that it's an immersion property that may have been earlier. So I I know Keith and I were excited that they said <laughs> almost the title. <laughs> Immersions, yeah. The bricks fall on Troy's face and they basically make the same wound mm. that Picard has earlier in the episode. <laughs> 
<laughs> but then she goes right back in despite the danger. No fear. Yeah. No fear from Troy. I liked Picard saying, let's stop fighting them. Let's cooperate. Except yeah. that there was no real good build up to it or there was a little bit of a payoff after the fact, but it, it felt very unearned. It, yeah. Uh, you, you just reminded me of something that I wanted to look up because of the, uh, the gold brick. I never really knew what that expression was, so I just looked it up. And of course, oh, that yeah. is pre- pretending to do work when you're not really. So it's the, you know, the, 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 the gangster had a gold brick that he was putting into the wall. I don't know if that was something they were doing intentionally, but like a, a bit of a wink or a nod. But I did not know. I did not get that. I you mentioned the gangster. Let's talk about real quick. Vinny Argiro played the hitman, which I assume is the gangster. He's best known mm. for Bullworth, Risky yep. Business, Mars Attacks, and Ed Wood. 51 credits, but he he looked somewhat familiar. Yeah. Oh, Risky Business. Okay. I knew, yeah, I, I knew I knew him from some stuff. Okay. Yeah. Not a t- I, oh, 51 credits, so not a ton, but Risky Business was his first credit. Worf has to shovel coal to fix Worf. <laughs> Was yes. that a little bit racist? No, I didn't really think I, that <laughs> didn't hit me. It, I just thought it was very like I thought we need physical labor. Pick the big black man to go shovel the coal. He's, but well, maybe he's I was reading too much into the scene. A little bit. He's he's the biggest person there, so why wouldn't he be? You know. Yeah. Okay. Also, I I thought it might have been a strategy to separate him from the from the others because they would have perceived him as being maybe a threat of some sort. Um, maybe. I thought they were just, I thought, I just thought it was the, well, the choice, I don't know, but I, I was like, oh, and now the, the warp drive's going faster. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> what are we doing? Because well, it's all connected <laughs> and metaphor. I, I, did, I, just... I did like the humor of Worf grumbling as he did it and the looks he gave the conductor. <laughs> I like that the, 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 the conductor said, that's the ticket. Ha! As he that, was, yeah. <laughs> that is... Time, for sure. Yeah. Now, when they they reproduced in the cargo bay with the giant crazy straw sculpture that looked like the nodes elsewhere, did you notice as it rose off the deck that Jonathan Franks was totally off the rest of the actors on where his eyeline was following <laughs> it? Like he was looking up way too high way before it got high? That cra- because you know they're looking at nothing, but it cracked me up that three of them seem to be in sync, and Jonathan Franks was already looking up, but everybody else was still like mid level. Maybe he was he was uh, just trying to predict the the path. What what like what might be up there to to get in the way, or you know, just threat assessment. I like your <laughs> making excuses. <laughs> that would be the first officer's job. So going back to Worf, he tells them to put his back into it. I'm like, no, that's not. You got to use the zone of power. You got to use your legs. You don't want to use your back. Warp's going to... Warp had a serious back injury not too long ago. He almost... Decided to Broke his spine and died. No, that's old, old fashioned. You, you, want, you yeah. want him to do. Yeah. I was going to say... That's I think thought it was, back then. Yeah, from the science... The, at the time, they would have assumed you had to put your back into it. <laughs> it like that... Uh, I can't think of the, the, the hip-hop song. You can do it. Put your back into it. Yeah, I was about to. I was that was going through my head in the entire you time you were saying that. Your, yeah. yeah, thing we can't say into it. Uh, <laughs> my, my favorite variation was you can put your put your anxiety attack into it. You know the um, <laughs> yeah, that's you know one of those indie memes that they had floating around. But <laughs> actually, I think that I think that might have been the name of the actual. Uh, you know how people have those long spoof page names, Facebook or something like that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. While we're talking about social media stuff, I actually did post about a gold bricker in the last week before I saw oh. this episode when Hermie was sleeping in my office. And I said, everyone needs a gold bricker in their office to make it look like they're doing a lot of work. Amazing. He was just passed out on my, and I don't know the, I couldn't tell you last time I used the term gold bricker. But I'd heard it. I just never, I never really understood what, the, what it meant until I looked it up just now and I saw it in the episode. I was like, wait, this, that's got to mean something. Here's a gold brick. <laughs> I think I got that from Beetle Bailey. Yeah, that's a, that's exactly what it show. sounds like. <laughs> Something yeah. like that was. Yeah, I still old. read Beetle Bailey daily. Just so you know, is it still? <laughs> are there still new ones? Yeah, okay. there are. Huh. Right. The woman trying to give the knight a drink repeatedly, <laughs> tapping uh, it. That made <laughs> me laugh very hard. I very much <laughs> just because they she just kept doing it. She committed yeah. to the bit. So oh and I don't God. know what that metaphor means. 
Although the 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 knight was supposed to be the shields or defense or whatever, but you know. Why we're yeah, on I don't back, I don't I'll see her at IMDb at all. That my alternate alternate episode is they get a new holodeck provider. <laughs> Freeze line a, a, is a, a, uh, a, failing them, so they a new sub- to subscription for <laughs> they they're like, you know what? You guys they get they they get a new contractor to handle all holodeck installations. So oh my goodness. I don't disagree. Just <laughs> yeah. All right, so I'm alternate. My last note is Data asking Picard why he let it happen, and Picard saying, well, the life form came from us because the ship came from us. Mm-hmm. And that was his explanation. He's totally cool letting it run off into the universe like all the other lights that have left the ship and run off into the universe throughout yeah. the series. I, my whole problem with this premise was the ship became self-aware just long enough to make an offspring and then go back to being not self-aware. Right. What, was the right. ship self-aware or was some other entity in it sort of learning through the ship and kind of taking control of it. See, I thought it was... To me, it felt like it was the ship. I mean, because mm. they said it was something that birthed from their own programming. It wasn't an alien thing that came in from oh, the outside. That, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's not what was going on there. I mean, that's that, I think that was the pur- the purpose of the storm, whatever, whatever was going on at the beginning. They're implying that something did something, got in there maybe. Oh, see, they... Important. I thought it was pretty clear from the dialogue that it was mm. all internally based, that nothing external got in. Just so like the storm may have caused been a catalyst to make the internally based process happen. Hmm. But Either that, I mean, way, it didn't really make a lot of sense. And I feel like if you take the thing on it as a whole, it's going to fall apart. It's only little moments I enjoyed. Hmm. So I will say it occurred to me as I was watching this episode, people have made a lot of the Wharf Troy romance in the final season. And I always thought of it as like Joey and Rachel. Uh-huh. And I am so glad that it's barely been a thing in this final season. I, that... I remember I remember I remember it being a lot more prominent somehow in my head. I don't know why. I think and it was just... all fan discussion. I don't think it was screen. I screen. made that I I that was one of my that's one of my remaining notes because I was like, I just realized, wait, I thought this was supposed to be a thing. And are we done? That now Fashion is so. We're not they, totally done. They will okay. revisit it even in the films, in the but never in a large way. Always right. in minor ways. Yeah. Which I think the series finale is probably the biggest focus we're going to get on, and I think that's okay. part of the series finale. But I, I did think there'd be more lead up to it, unless there's something in the penultimate episode that I don't, I'm not aware of. Yeah. We don't have yeah. much left of it. Well, like, and, um, the main parts of it are already passed, as far as I know. I, I, I think it's I think it's my my having seen those parts in reruns enough, like mm-hmm. way back when it was on. It, I mean, th- those it was like pair of episodes or so where they were kind of leaning into it, was it a bit really more. Just the wharf seeing alternate timelines and right. he was with Troy, right. right? And then, like I said, I think that plays in the series finale in a in a significant way. Mm-hmm. And it's mentioned in the movies, but it's not like committed to in the movies, so. Fashion and so had a couple interesting takes. One on Worf and, and Troy and just saying, oh, they thought at the very end, Troy's shooting Worf will look like it's happening as soon as we're done with this thing. The <laughs> other thing, they along those same lines, they do, oh, there we go. Yet, we st- yet despite the sparseness of it, we have Imzadi 2 Triangle about the Worf Troy Riker Triangle. Speaking of, and that's not exactly probably fan, Probably but, because of it. That's uh, building on what's already there, I guess. But speaking of fanfic, they, the fashion and so folks were like, yeah, Jordy and, and Data in a, in, in a Jeffrey's tube and it's getting hot in there. They're like, oh, yeah, somebody needs to write up fanfic. They did the search. There is fanfic of those about those two, but not in there a should be. tube. And they're there like, should be. Opportunity Why not there. in the Jeffrey's tube? That's the obvious place. That's a good question. Also, I creeped on... Well, because it belongs creepy, to Jeffrey. But, well, Sorry. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to friend the fact... <laughs> Patreon viewers don't have a rating of appropriateness. <laughs> so I can flick them off as much as I want. Act. I'm going to try and friend the fashion and sew people because they they both have Instagram accounts. And they only have like 900 followers. Just 900 followers. So, because I, I, it'd be fun. To, I think they might be a fun special episode, but we'll... That's, Way down the road. So at the end, when they're in the holodeck and they're 
they're toasting and they're everyone's drinking champagne. How come their glasses don't disappear when everybody else disappears? That occurred to me, and I think haven't we? I don't know if we've talked about that before. Like the, I think they use replicators in the holodeck for yeah. consumables. They perhaps, do, or... and I assume if it's in their hand, then yeah. that's different. It stays there. And then I think you already touched on this, Jimmy, but and I did too. But just the last thought from Picard, I thought was it was a it was in it was a cool wrap up of of just like. Well, you know, this is what was going on and it makes sense. And remember, we said this is the computer is using all of our memories and thoughts and stories and what it thinks of us. And and the the other part of that, another part of that is, hey, I trust my crew. You guys are all pretty awesome. So I knew we were fine, Mm. which is a recurring theme, obviously, for going back to TOS for that matter. So I enjoyed that. And that is my last note. Let's get to the rankings. (laughs) <laughs> Who was your annoyance this week? Hmm. You can probably guess who mine is. Or what mine is. Yeah. The holodeck. Oh, dang. It's, I'm, I, I mean, it's... I'm gonna I'm gonna pick a specific one. It's the artificial intelligence that is evolving <laughs> and creating reproducing. That's right. It was self-aware enough to know it needed the crew's help and to logically weigh out that the crew is offering to help and I'm going to <laughs> ignore my instincts but yeah. not self-aware enough to like actually communicate with them in any real way and yeah yeah dumb 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 episode sorry <laughs> <laughs> it's it's got to be one of the holograms but i mean i think they, they kind of well the conductor the engineer the heavy the girl what the knight that's such a tough call then pick the artificial intelligence like me because it created i mean that, that makes more sense i guess the, 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 the puppet master of all those things Okay. But who are we having a drink with? Hmm. I can't find her credit on IMDb or anywhere else. I and I didn't go on memory alpha, but the woman tapping the night. I, <laughs> I was she, just thinking it. I was just thinking it. attractive way. and she made me laugh. So and you would not have a helmet on if she's giving you a drink. So that's you'd correct. Be able to that drink. is correct. <laughs> I was gonna use very similar reasoning actually, because of the she clearly wants to have a drink with someone very badly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going with Gates McFadden because how do you feel when we've got a final mystery for the crew before the series finale and you involve six of the seven and you get left out again? Yep. She just got to do her little like, well, you never know who's going to be on the train. It might be. It was a good scene. It was a good scene. It was not enough. It was not enough. So she'll be involved in the finale. They all seven get heavily involved in the finale. But yeah, I don't know that. We're going to get much from most of the cast next week. I think next week, will not in two weeks, the, the all, penultimate, I think, will be very focused on a couple of characters. We'll see. Okay. No, because I haven't seen that one. So I'm looking forward to it. Anyway, ranking the episode. Jesus, I don't even know where to start. <laughs> yeah. Right. Let's start with Phantasms. Better or worse than Phantasms. Pretty uh, comparable, I would say, probably. Yeah, right? Hmm. I give this one an edge down just for lack of originality but yeah in terms of quality i think they're pretty similar we're in the ballpark I, i'd go lower too keith would you go lower or yeah higher? okay lower so below that is dark page i'm going lower same agreed below that is attached they go better because the one scene we got a crush room picard in this episode is better than that whole episode <laughs> <laughs> I think you've convinced me with that argument, Gene. <laughs> yeah. So Thank Emergence you. is there. Yeah. That makes it number 17 of 23. Wow. Deservedly so. <laughs> Next week, Deep Space Nine, The Wire. Dr. Bashir fights to save Garrick's life when a device implanted in his brain designed to alleviate pain in the event of torture begins to malfunction and is slowly killing him. A little bit too much spoiler for me. But, it's a little cheap. My uh, God, it's just like, yeah. I'm glad I avoided them. it. Live long, stay out of the holodeck, and prosper. It's all been done. Presents. Who's got the time?